Bolt Gun is a retro-inspired first-person shooter released on May 23, 2023. Developed by Auroc Digital and published by Focus Entertainment, it takes place within Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 universe and places the player into the role of Malum Cato, a stern guard ultramarine. I've got no spoilers for this one. The story of this game is fairly straightforward. The stern guard is sent to retrieve a cursed object, the power source from the 2011 game Space Marine, and that's pretty much it. It's a serviceable framework for a boomer shooter, and I'd wager most players aren't exactly loading up Bolt Gun to read an intense drama. It's light on story, heavy on Gibbs. A few words on the Warhammer franchise since we're here. I've played a few Warhammer games. I've come to the conclusion that after a certain point, the less you know about Warhammer, the better. Games Workshop has cultivated a unique style and tone to the games in the setting, grimdark or whatever you'll call it, that is really fun to experience and observe, but the overarching lore is coming from so many sources of varying quality, all of these sources trying to elevate different factions and characters, and utilizing story to achieve different purposes, so it's a bit like the Star Wars Extended Universe before it was called. Plus, a lot of direction in this universe seems strictly tied to commercialization, which models aren't selling, which models could be replaced, and so on. Once I found myself reading the wiki pages for the Primarchs, I decided it was time to stop digging, and I don't regret that. Bolt Gun's gunplay focuses on matching the correct weapon to the threat. Each enemy has a set power level displayed on their health bar, and each weapon also has a power level. A weaker weapon will do less damage to a stronger enemy, and enemies frequently arrive in large, mixed-strength crowds. So battle becomes a series of quick decisions. Use a shotgun to clear a large swarm of weak enemies, or switch to the plasma gun to focus down a tougher enemy. Or, you can just use the heavy bolter on everything. Until you run out of ammo anyways. The titular bolt gun is useful for almost every encounter in the game, with plentiful ammo and conveniently explodey barrels to plug. However, some weapons, like the shotgun, become fairly overshadowed by around the midpoint, when weak enemies become scarce and stronger weapons become plentiful. The stern guard is also equipped with three kinds of grenades, a standard frag grenade that mulches cultists, a crack grenade that explodes on impact for those tougher enemies, and as a power-up item, the vortex grenade, which pulls everything in and pulps them. The grenade system is probably the only control-related element I had an issue with. On keyboard, Q throws grenades and G switches grenade types. In the frenzy of battle, it's very easy to throw the incorrect grenade, and the grenades do different enough duty that they seem like they should just be bound to individual keys without switching required. Melee combat consists of a chain sword and a charge that knocks away or outright pops everything in your path. The Chainsword, surprisingly, acts as a low-damage combat knife for trash mobs instead of a boss killer or a special execution weapon, which makes it feel a bit flimsy. The kills just aren't as satisfying as I'd expect from something called a Chainsword. Oh well, it's still fun to use on cultists and the more lowly demons. Levels are often labyrinthine with subtle clues to guide the player in the correct direction. Windows the same color as keys, slime trails, or outright placards marking the path. But given the speed of combat and how enemies tend to spawn via teleporting or from hidden chambers behind the player, it's easy to get turned around and spend a few minutes backtracking. Levels feature color-coded keys in the spirit of doom, and although they are only rarely difficult to find or use. Almost every level features a purge section, where the demons are locked into an arena with the stern guard, the screen flashes red, and progress is halted until a few waves of demons are disposed of. On the harder difficulties, these are hard-won fights for survival, but on normal and easy, they tend to become tedious as the player hunts down the last few enemies hiding in alleyways. There are also a handful of secret items on each level. Vortex grenades, damage and ammo modifiers, and a weapon upgrade that boosts a single weapon's stats for the remainder of the level. These are often hidden frustratingly well, but are mostly optional. They can make the level a lot easier, but they only become a necessity on the hardest difficulty level's boss fights. Bolt Gun is one of many recent games trying to capture a retro pixel art aesthetic, and good news, it pulls it off. 
The options menu has sliders to adjust how much pixelation is layered over the graphics and even allows for some customization of the color palette. This was a great addition for me personally, since around an hour of playing at the default pixel setting was enough to give me a headache. If you're completely insane, you can also max out the pixel filter and pretend you're a space marine glaucoma. While the graphics aren't ultra realistic, even without the filters, they are crisp and stylized in a way that should hold up for years. Levels often feature impressive decoration, mostly gothic architecture, foundries, caves, and massive statues to reload behind. That being said, the environments are very similar to Space Marine and don't seem to introduce any new ideas or design. The industrial slash cathedral settings are certainly striking to someone who has never played a Warhammer game before, but it seems to be quickly becoming the default setting for games in this universe. Among the enemies, the Nurgling really stands out as my favorite. Sure, they're demons, but they're buddies. They've got football helmets. Anyways, you process them into paste just like everything else. On that note, the gore and gibbs in this game are really something special. Cultists also have a nice bit of design variation to them, but the bigger demons seem straight from the source, with no variables to spice them up. I do appreciate the colors of the demons, though. Mainly a sickly neon green for the Nurgle creatures and bright purples and blues for the Zinch demons. They stick out well from the muted environments and provide a lot of visual interest to the game. The game's title menu has a full soundtrack of instrumental old-school metal, and internet rumors claim at least one of these songs features Queen bassist Brian May at some point in the 90s. Shockingly enough, this might be true, as the menu soundtrack was pulled from the album Oblivion by d rock and interviews from the 90s confirmed that Brian May participated in the recording of the album. While the menu soundtrack rocks, the in-game music is mostly quiet chiptune and faint otherworldly warbling. It might work for some people, but to be brutally honest, I didn't even notice the soundtrack in my initial playthrough. The sound design, however, is great. Weapons have distinct and satisfying noises, from the crunch of a shotgun followed by the fiddling of falling shells, to the hiss of the plasma rifle, to the sturdy drum of the bolt. And of course, the real soundtrack to the game, the heavy tread of Malum's power armor as he navigates the world the whine of servos as he jumps and lands and devastates. The sound design is very effective at getting a single point across. A space marine is a walking tank. No matter what comes at you, you're sturdy enough to take the hit. Bolt Gun has only the barest framework of a story, so players looking for a more character-driven experience will probably not find a lot to work with. This is, first and foremost, a game about the guns and learning to navigate large vertical environments while effectively painting floors. As a person with somewhat limited experience in retro shooters, I found this to be a very accessible entry point into the genre. It's fairly forgiving as environmental hazards won't immediately insta-kill the player, and most missions can be completed in around 7 to 15 minutes without much fuss. I'd recommend this game to anyone who has even the remotest interest in retro first-person shooters, because this game really lets you jump right into the carnage. Fans of Warhammer will also get a kick from going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greater demons of chaos, although I suspect most Warhammer fans have already bought this game. One piece of advice to anyone interested in playing Bolt Gun. The first three levels are relatively easy compared to what comes after, so don't ramp up the difficulty until you've gone through a few purge zones and gotten a better feel for the combat. I started on the highest difficulty, Exterminatus, and the spike was particularly brutal. Pick the difficulty that aligns with your experience, then only ramp up from there if it seems too easy. On the pain scale, I'd give Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun a mild. It's really a joy to play, and I would definitely play it again given the chance. Well, that's my second game review. 
If you've got any suggestions for games to review, feel free to leave a comment, or just say hey, whatever you like. See ya!